I'm putting the finishing touches on Katie's haircut right now. And so this is going to be mostly cutting, not a lot of talking, which I normally do a lot of talking. So um, what I want to do is I want to break up this line down at the bottom. I just kind of trimmed it and made sure everything was even. And now I'm going to have Katie stand up and we're going to go in. I'm going to break this up by taking some um, large triangular sections and getting rid of them. So it's going to be kind of fun. So go ahead and stand up for me, Katie. Come on to the back of the chair. I usually will have my clients stand up at least two times during their visit, during the consultation, and then again when I'm finishing the cut. So here we go. So turn a little bit. At the beginning, beginning I explained that I really wanted to get rid of this um, solid line at the bottom, and so this is where we're going with it. So. my texturizers. So just creating some holes. Kind of like that, removing some of the hair. And I've got one triangle in the center. I'm going to move over a little bit. You see how that broke up that bottom area already? So go ahead and turn just a little bit, Katie, right there. You put one hand on the chair here. There you go. So I'm behind the ear, I want to keep this piece of hair right behind the ear. So I'm going to make sure that my triangle doesn't extend down into that area. So there's my next triangle. I'm just going to lift that up and remove it. Texturizers once again. So now I have hair in between those two areas. A little bit more. Okay, then turn. So we're kind of making this a little bit shaggier right now. Okay. Right behind the ear. Keeping the hair right behind the ear, right there. So just kind of having fun with this. Removing hair where I want it to collapse and where I want to break up the, um, you know, that solid line. So I'm just going in and removing right at those areas. What this is going to do is it's going to collapse her shape into the nape area because we're removing a lot of that bulk, but it leaves all of the length. I'm going to come in and break up a little bit more with my regular scissors. By creating those holes inside the shape, it's a lot easier to break up this, um, this actual line at the bottom. Okay, so let's turn again. Okay, I still have a line right here. I'm going to take away 
um, the hair right above the ear and break that up because I've got hair behind the ear and I want hair in front of the ear. So I'm going to keep that piece and keep the piece behind. So I've got one more triangular section right here and then I'm just going to come in and for this one I'm going to freehand slice instead of using my texturizers because I want to leave a little bit more to the hair. So I'm just going to remove take it a little bit shorter there and break in getting rid of that line okay and turn it around all the way keep going keep going keep going all the way there you go okay then right above the ear again just a small triangle. Um, these triangle sections really give you the ability to um, create space. We're creating actually disconnection inside of our cut. So do you guys have any questions about this? I haven't really been watching that. I've just been concentrating over here. So freehand slicing, removing a little bit of that length. Making sure that I still have the hair behind the ear and in front of the ear. and then breaking in. So in addition to breaking up the line, I'm actually taking um, and placing holes inside of the line. This comes after I've done my cut and everything is structured. And I'm just kind of changing up the whole um, feeling of our cut. I'm gonna turn this way. I have all those holes placed inside. Once again, it was right, there was a triangle in the center and then one on each side of that. And what that does is it breaks up our line and gives us the space and movement, room for the hair to actually move. one length so I just want to place a little um, blending piece right on top so this is very visual at one at some point um, everything is technical but then it kind of becomes a visual thing that you're you're working with when you're working like this so just this one piece I'm gonna come in and give myself a little bit of a blend to it there we go I feel like that blends better and it's not quite so hanging about the same thing on the other side, so go ahead and turn. When you stand your client up, you start to see things a little bit differently. So um, you're viewing it from a different angle rather than looking down like we normally do. So I always have my clients stand up at least twice during their uh, visit with me. There we go. Okay, go ahead and have a seat, Katie. And I'm going to do one last thing on her fringe, just to lighten up this fringe area, just right above the eye. So I, um, I love the length of it, and I love how it's actually feeling, but I really want it to um, just to be able to see through it a little bit more. So if you're ever trying to um, remove weight, just make sure you elevate. So I'm going to remove a little bit of weight and give her space right in the middle. So I'll do the same thing with a small triangle right in that fringe area, make sure it's right where I want it. I like that piece. I kinda want this right there. So it's very small. I'm going to elevate relatively high. Go this way so you can see. So right up here, and I'm going to use my texturizers and about an inch from the ends, just do four or five little snips and then when it comes back down it's very soft but there's almost a little peekaboo right above that eye so we're going to just finish out let's see what else do I need to do
keep this off to the side. I like to use my texturizers along the edge. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, then just a little bit of texture on these ends. I'm just using my texturizers. I don't really want to create any more holes. I just want to reduce the bulk of the ends of the hair. So when you're choosing your tools for your cutting, um, you have to think about what is your end result and what are you really trying to achieve. So if I'm trying to remove a lot of hair, I can go in and use my texturizers. These are 42, so it's almost like a classic blender. And I can actually remove quite a bit of hair with them. Or if I want to freehand slice because I just want to break it up a little bit. So it really does determine or de depend on what you want. Oh, and I like that tucked back. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit of bend to that, so we'll wet that down a touch. But there we go. That was putting some of the finishing touches on um, Katie's shag haircut. So it's very, uh, we were talking about Farrah Fawcett, and it's very similar to um, kind of what Farrah Fawcett was wearing towards um, well, when she got a little bit older before she unfortunately passed. But um, so we have a nice little shag haircut. Thank you guys for joining.